Decals now um, on and everything's been given a, a clear cut and sealed in. So I'm ready to finish the lifeboats now. Um, these particular ones uh, need a little bit of uh, detail painting, um, as do these, but but less so. Um, the little raised squares on the back of the uh, lifeboat there, that they should be black. And similarly on these the little square there should be black. Um, then we've got clear parts that go into, into this. So we've got glazing already done for these, although we've got to paint the uh, little dividers there. But on these ones, we haven't. So we've got to paint in the windows here at the front and around the side of this um, uh, raised piece. So I'm gonna do the painted glazing in, in gun metal, which we've done throughout the build. Um, and my first job is actually paint the, the black areas in. So uh, I'm using um, 71057 for this, which is um, model air. Let's get rid of that. Um, and hopefully that should uh, be the right consistency for brushing, but I've got a bit thinner to hand if needs be. Okay, painted the top parts of all these lifeboats. So our next thing is to look at the hulls and uh, we've got various bits and pieces we need to do with the hull. Um, first thing is the hull edge needs to be um, painted in, in a black because it's like a, a rubber bump strip on the actual boats themselves. So just gonna go around and highlight that paint pen does this job nice and cleanly compared to trying to do it with a with a paintbrush There we go, nice, thin, even stripe. Now we've got decals to go on here as well, but we do need to put the bump strip in. Okay, now the other thing we need to do is the propellers. So we have a single propeller here, which we can just pick out in silver. Uh, and that completes that hull and actually that lifeboat. Um, the, the, the rubbing strip here should also be aluminium. Um, and I nearly forgot that bit. So I want to use a different silver for that.
There we go. So we can let that dry. And then on this one, you see the paint pen, paint is already dry, so we can handle this. Uh, the propellers, we have two of these at the rear. Now the the um, little bilge keels are, are white on this, so I'm going to leave them um, white as well. There we go. That is the bottom of that lifeboat done. So just got decals left to put on that, but we can do that after they're built up. So I'll carry on doing that, and we'll get it to the point where we're ready for decals on there. Okay, we are all painted up, so now we can start gluing these together. I'm going to start with these ones here. Um, I'm using um, the Tamiya, which one is it? I know I always get a mix up, the extra thin, but not the quick drying one. Um, and what we're going to do is, the, the bottom is the female part, so I'm just going to put some in the mating holes. The fit is... Uh, good to loose, so we're not going to have much in the way of problems here. And then I'm just going to paint it on. And the reason I'm doing that is I don't want any glue going anywhere near the paint. So putting it together before you paint it just really... Um, sorry. Putting, putting the two parts together with the glue already on means that we're not having to go in and, and possibly disrupt the paint. So there you have it, the first lifeboat, and that is ready to go on. So it mounts in these two ends here, um, and there's a particular sequence for them and a particular direction for them. So what I'm going to do is look for best sides um, and... We might have to do a little bit of touch up as well, so we can do that before we do it. So that's that one. Let's just have a look at this one. So the same principle, only we're dealing with um, the glass parts. So just want to check the fit. Yeah, the fit is good. He says, there we go. So I'll do exactly the same, flood some glue into the female part of the uh, pinpoints and then we're just going to put some around the edge. And I'm only doing the inside of the edge um, because the, the glass part actually doesn't go all the way up to the edge. There you go, that's nice and tacky now and line that up carefully. There we go, down in one swoop and leave it. And that's the glass bit on. Then this bit goes on top of the glass. So let's just test fit that. Yeah, that looks good as well. So the top now becomes the female part. So we'll put some glue into the little holes. Nearly out of my glue. I'll have to get some more. Now, if you find it's flashing off quickly, just go back over it again because the first first time you pass with the glue, it will sink into the glue and start making it soft. The second time you go around, that'll sit on the surface of the first glue. Um, uh, and we'll sink it much more slowly, so it gives you time. So there we have it, our next lifeboat done. Right, I'm going to crack on with these and get them done, and then we can touch them up, and then I'll shove them on the ship. Well, that's our lifeboats done. Before I can install them, I've got some work we need to do on the promenade bulkhead um, so um, we've got 
doors to install uh, some fire boxes, electrical boxes. Um, then we can put those on and also the um, little uh, life raft canisters and davits that go with them. Then we can get to the railing. So the promenade deck is actually really quite an involved part of the build. Here we see Southampton on the 27th of September 1948. The Queen Mary is arriving at the end of her war service and will soon be refitted as a passenger ship. And Queen Elizabeth is uh, just about to complete her refitting and is soon be sailing on a maiden commercial voyage. Queen Elizabeth was exquisitely decorated, a lot say slightly more refined than the Mary. This is the, the first class dining room or restaurant, the lounge, once again all the different woods and uh, silk panels and uh, specially woven carpets. Here is the, the smoking room. The observation lounge. And here she is, about to sail on her first commercial voyage, the 16th of October, 1946. The transatlantic ferry now had two ships that Cunard had first proposed in 1926. Two ships of comparable size and speed and they worked in tandem and took the cream of the transatlantic traffic. 1957 was the high point of the post-war era. More passengers than ever travelled transatlantic by sea and air. Cunard had a fleet of 10 liners that were sailing continuously full and they had a special luxury cruise ship the SS Coronia it was painted in three shades of green and everything seemed fine but there was a big threat not so much on the horizon but in the air because on the 26th of October 1958 the first 707 commercial transatlantic flight took place across the Atlantic. And Cunard thought that it would be a passing fad and that the ships would always remain full. And this is the Cunard fleet. The express runs with the Mary and Elizabeth, the intermediate and cruising fleet, Britannic, Mauritania, Coronia. Services to Canada by four brand new 20,000 ton ships and a cargo passenger service with the Media and Parthia. But very, very quickly, Kennard began to lose passengers, began to lose money, and they kept the ships sailing, eating into their cash reserves. And in 1957, Sir John Brocklebank, the Cunard chairman, announced that the company was starting to look into the design and building of a new ship that would replace the Queen Mary. She was called the Q3, or the third Cunard Queen. She would look something like this. She was a traditional all year round transatlantic ship. She was no real provision for sailing on cruises. And then she morphed into this more modern variant. But in 1961, there was a shareholder revolt because the profits of the Cunard Company dwindling so much 
and it was began to be realized that you just wouldn't be able to operate a transatlantic line a year round that you you would need to go cruising in order to remain profitable and so the q3 was abandoned before it was actually ordered the old queens therefore soldiered on here we see the mary in the 1960s And it wasn't a good time for Cunard because uh, the ships each year carried fewer and fewer passengers. Here we see the Elizabeth arriving in New York. You can hardly see anybody there on the on the top deck. But Cunard still had faith, at least in the old Elizabeth, and they sent her back to Clyde Bank in 1966 to be modernized and to have some cruise features added and on her way to the shipyard she passed the brand new swedish america line at kungsholm that you see there in the distance she had just completed at john brown's and was about to enter service she eventually became p and o's cruise ship victoria and uh, sea princess sailed under those two names for p o eventually so refitted at scott lithgow a new swimming pool in the lido era was built and it was assumed that she would remain in service until 1975 but some of the changes that were enacted um, were purely dreadful we see here on the, on the left this marvelous very airy space which was the ballroom had um, most beautiful bulkheads with some um, button silk and the woodwork and that was all removed a false ceiling was added and you've got this hideous midships bar that replaced that um, marvelous ballroom the ship was sent on a number of cruises and she did relatively well on her cruises one of the big problems imagine neither the queen mary or the queen elizabeth had a laundry and so all the laundry had to be put ashore well i found i still have some electrical and fire boxes left um, and I've not got much left in the way of doors. And to be honest, um, I need some double doors as well. So um, I might I might cut some fresh doors for the promenade deck. I've got, got plenty of material to do that. So um, let's do that. Let's cut up what we need. Um, so we need one, two, three, four four fire boxes, two electrical boxes, a single door and three doubles. That shouldn't take long. So we need a slightly rectangular the fire boxes. One. Two. three four of those and let's get that out of the way i think it was two electrical boxes wasn't it they're also slightly rectangular but they go landscape rather than portrait two of those okay um, and then when it comes to wooden doors um, we've got a double door um, right near the front here so it's under the the second and I'm just on the kit they've put it in as a window two two narrow slots as a window so I want to make sure that the width covers that 
So I'm going to cut it oversize and then I'm going to mark it and trim it down. I'm just placing it against there we go. I just want to check the height as well. Another consideration. Right, okay. So, I'm just going to trim that down ever so slightly. That makes my first double door. I need another two of those. So, if I do them all the same, that will <clears throat> certainly look better. Probably just gone out of shot there, haven't I? <clears throat> So that is three double doors cut. Um, we're going to do these a bit differently. Rather than putting on the little discs, I'm going to give them a dab of silver paint, I think. And then we need a, silver, um, a single door. So what I'm going to do is the same height. Uh, and a bit wider than half. So... There we go. Didn't take long, did it? Uh, and what we can do is we can um, glue those into place um, and then um, varnish them and then give them a dab of silver paint. Right, my fireboxes and my doors are installed. I just need to put the windows in the doors. So to do that, I am just going to go in with a paint pen and two little blobs for a double dot, one blob for a single dot. And the last one, which is out of shot for you, is the easiest. Because I've got no davits there. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's amazing what tiny little details does to the overall finish of a model. Right, with that done, um, I am ready to put the lifeboats in. Now, um, the lifeboats have a couple of little holes in them. And you plop them into this. Um, thing here and there's a little bit of flex in them so as it sort of clips in I don't think we need any glue um, but we'll find out in a sec so just make sure can you see that one yep okay so I'll put one of these small ones in first if we put the back end in don't want to scratch the paint, but yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's lovely. Held in there without any. But the advantage of not putting the glue on, of course, is if I've got a problem when I'm putting the photo etch in, um, I can always remove the uh, lifeboat temporarily. So that's that's really handy. Uh... Go. Okay. 
Yeah, happy with that. Right, let's try one of these larger ones. Hopefully this will be the same. Right, okay, the holes in the, the glazing this time. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. We can crack on with this now. Now these walkways should have a bit of railing on and I was sort of waiting for this point to decide whether I was going to do that or not. You can't see it and the railing, um, if we had a lifeboat missing, you could see the railing very clearly and then there's a little blue box in the, on the inside but once this is in place you just can't see it so I'm wondering about the uh, whether that's worth doing or not. I might at some point, and again, this is another advantage to not gluing them on. I might at some point go, you know what, I want to put the railing in. But right now I'm thinking, why bother? No one's going to see it. And even if you look over it, you can hardly see the railing. And I actually wonder if the lifeboats are slightly in the way, because the parts aren't perfectly made yeah i i think we're probably gonna forget about that bit of railing right that's my last lifeboat going in And that certainly does something for the overall look of the model. So my next step is the promenade railing and we put the railing on before we can put these uh, life ca um, life raft canisters on uh, because the railing actually goes behind the canisters on the deck um, you can just if I move move you in a little bit you can see how that railing is going to go around the back there and then the canisters are going to go on and then the davits are going to go on we've got a little bit of touch up to do um, uh, along the very edge and we'll do that at the same time as we're painting the railings because it's all the same colour um, so yeah um, I've also got these windows um, along the, the promenade here to glaze now I'm not glazing all of them I'm glazing these ones but the ones underneath the davits I'm going to re remain black because they'll be a, a bit sharper um, I I might go in and, and glaze them, I might change my mind. It depends on how I get on with these, to be honest. When it comes to actually the, doing the railings, the ones that come in the um, Technic kit, um, the, the Pontos ones, are not quite as good as the gold medal model ones because the gold medal model... Um, railings have the positions of the life rings in so they have the the mount for the life ring already on the photo etch and also the boxes there's um electrical and and fire boxes on the railings at the point of each davit and they've they've got them marked on there so you can actually paint them um and that is really really helpful whereas the the pontos ones just completely forget it what I like about the Pontos ones is you can see here these little davits so they're two-dimensional flat davits 
um, on these, whereas Pontos give you these um, separate davits that you fold. And you've seen me do these. Um, so you end up with um, them being three dimensional because they're a box shape and that's how they should be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna nip off the davits um, from the railing and then install those davits behind the railing as we go. Um, so we're gonna use a bit of both, um, the solution, ending up with a solution that looks the best. Also, um, behind the um, inflatable lifeboat um, canisters, um, on these railings, we have these little gantries um, here. Um, so we've got a, um, a bend to do. Uh, we've got a little template there with an angle. Uh, and then we have um, an additional part to put in. Um, so we, we fold it, then we bend up the edges um, so that we've got this rail here. Then we put a center rail in then we attach it to the installed railings. Now I might, each one of these has actually got two guide ropes that goes off each corner. So I might um, put the guide ropes on so, so they will go up um, onto the bulkhead. And on, on the actual ship, they go up to the, a little pulley on the bulkhead and then go down to a cleat and get tied off um, at the window level. And as, if you see some of the walk rounds of the promenade deck, you know, that their arms reach so that the um, uh, ship's crew can, can handle them. Um, so basically, the, the davits seem to be on a hinge using a pulley. Um, so quite rudimentary, really, but uh, effective, I'm sure. Um, so I might try and emulate that. Uh, we'll see how I get on. But I think if we can at least get the guide rope up to the bulkhead, I think that will make a big difference. Clearly, they're going to have to be either side of there's some little vents there. And I've got a little bit of touch up to do around the vents first anyway. So um, I had contemplated gluing on little bits of wire. Um, as the cleats um, and then painting them in so um, but they're so tiny um, I, I don't think they'd see them if we just terminate terminate the um, white rigging that we've already used the elastic rigging if we if we glue it um, down near the window then glue it up at the top and then feed it onto the gantry I think that will look pretty awesome so that's my plan whether we pull it off or not at this stage who knows um, but there's quite a bit to do here on this promenade deck so um, uh, let's crack on with that but just those like I say it's the tiny tiny little details that make all the difference here so the next thing I need to do is actually cut out all the uh, photo etch and get it bent so let's do that Right, just need to put an edge on my uh, my knife here. So if you're new to the channel, you you may not know that I use a particular, I use a blade that I um, modify to give me a chisel edge for removing my uh, photo etch and I find that is the best way of cutting um, close to the photo etch. So I have a nice flat edge there that I've created. So this is an Exacto number 11 blade that the, the point snapped. So we've just um, put a heel on it and put an edge on it and we turn it into a rather nice photo etch removing tool. There we go. That should do us. Right, we can crack on with this now. So, gold medal models have a lovely system of naming their photo etch the same numbers used in the kit so it's really easy to know what number you're using 
Not always as easy to find the photo etch though because it's um, not in order. So let's uh, see how we get on. We'll get there in the end. So I'm looking for two, four, five first. Okay, found two, four, five. It was on the other fret, of course it was. Um, so, because we've got a chisel tip we can go straight in, which means I get a better view. It also means that um, I'm not dragging the part, which with railings especially is highly important because it deforms the railings if you're not careful. There we go. So I can see from that railing, this is the one that goes right on the end here, um, that we are going to need a life preserver on that one. So what I'm going to do is cut the life preserver out for it as well, which is here. Uh, and I don't want to lose the life preserver, so we'll put it in a little container. Okay, my next railing along is um, 246, which is this one here. Can do a good job of removing that knob. Right, that's the next railing done. Um, and then we'll need the gantries in there, and there's um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those, I think. So there appears to be big ones and small ones. Um, so if I just get the photo etch part, that might help me understand. Right, not clear to me. So what's it say? Put gantries onto notches on the railings. Well, we've got gaps in the railings. Not notches. Ah, okay. Right, so I, I had missed this, but there's actually front railing and back railing, which is not something the kit the kit does. The kit just gives you railings around the back. But this railing here will go on the front. Interesting. So we've got a front and back because the one with the notches on is for the gantries and that tells me how many large and small ones I need and their locations so okay so you need 246 and you also need um, 246A okay so that's the back railing And we need one large and one, two, three, four, five, six small. And we obviously we're only doing one side, so we have to do two lots ultimately. But for now, I'm just building this side to show you what we're doing. And see how much easier it is with a chisel tip to remove these. So we'll put that in with the life preservers. Was it six we said? It's a lovely, beautiful, sunny Sunday morning here. It's uh, what time are we on? Just gone eight o'clock in the morning. And the sun is out, and it's lovely and bright. 
So now the schools are, are, are just going back, the weather's changing to summer weather. How annoying is that? Let's have a quick go at bending, shall we? So I've got my trusty Tamiya bending pliers here. We'll do a, a small one first. Just noticed I missed a nib. There we go. So it bends. Well, we can see these rails come in, it bends there, but I'm thinking, let's bend these rails up first. That's one in. And that's the other end. And then there's one that we have to glue in the middle, um, I think just on the big one. So we need to remove that part in a sec. Now then, put in the building, bend in, and just want to check it against our bend template. We're a little off yet. Nearly there, just a fraction more. So, on reflection, I think it's best to bend, bend, bend up the little guide railing afterwards. Slightly overdone there now. There we go, that's spot on. And then that has two little hooks that we've got to bend backwards. I'll take a close up photograph when it's done so you can understand how that works. But it has two little hooks. If you bend them backwards, that's then going to allow you to hook it onto the railing. So let's give that a go. So here's our railing. There we go, that works a treat. That works a treat and then that will go in there. Like so. So we've got some bending to do with that railing. So what I've got to try and work out now is how this goes.
So there's a bend line. So we put the railing on because the instructions are one-to-one um, -one scale. So we're bending on those first two um, points there and those first two points there. Okay, so that will be to conform to that shape. So let's do that now. I'm actually just going to run my uh, sanding block over the top and just make sure we're totally smooth. And we'll do the same on the bottom because if you have even a tiny amount of nub left, you won't be able to sit your part right. I find these are brilliant for this job. Um, you can get them from the um, Airfix website. Okay. So it's the first two uh, stanchions that we're bending in. So put a little bend on the first one and we'll put a little bend on the second one. So that's roughly right. Let's just test that and see. Have you got that in shot? Yeah. Okay, just have you got that in shot? No, right, so let me just move you into shot. So just bending this one, um, and it leaves us with a, a railing overlap, which I'm not, not happy about. The instructions tell us to bolt, bend the uh, photo etch at the second second one back um, oh maybe I've read the instructions wrong yeah I might have read the instructions wrong ah bend it one back that's why it's not making any sense right I'm just going to get, this is how I correct my uh, mistakes when it comes to these things, flat, these are perfectly flat pliers and um, they will restore any bends we've put in totally. There you go, nice and flat now. Now obviously we fatigue the part so we do have to be careful if we continue to do that we'll snap it. Okay, that should make more sense now. Yeah, that meets up lovely. What I'm a bit fussed about is how the railing is tucking behind the bulkhead. I would like it to have been shaped to sit on the forward edge there rather than tucked behind. So I think what I'm going to do is just cut the photo etch so that I can put it, glue it straight onto that um, bulkhead. Because what's happening is the, the photo etch is tucking behind the bulkhead and so that's putting it at an angle. So you're starting off here at that point and then it's going um, away from the edge of the deck to tuck behind there, it doesn't look right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very carefully 
um, trim this back. So we've got to emulate the curve starting from that first stanchion point goes up to the third one. So I'm going to cut that out there and we'll, we'll cut it not too far away to start with and uh, then trim it to length will be the plan. Now it becomes very delicate now because we've not got the supporting frame so each one of these little individual um, bars is very vulnerable to being bent out of shape. Right, that is all my railings cut and bent. I've just got to bend the rest of these gantries, uh, which I'll do in a minute. So my next task is to paint all these up ready for uh, installing. Um, so we'll paint them all white. Some of them have brown top rails um, uh, going the, the full length of the promenade there. The others at this end are, are just all white and don't have the, the wooden top rail. So um, we've also got to paint in the, the little life rafts and um, rings and then glue them on. So I'm going to do all of that. I'll film a little bit of it um, and then I'll come back to you when we're installing and we'll try and get a, um, a, a camera angle that allows you to see me installing the ra uh, railings. But I've got quite a bit of work to do before I can do that. So. Um, yeah, the other thing that I've nearly forgotten to do is put the decals on these larger lifeboats. So there's a little rubbing strip decal that goes along the bottom there. It's quite an odd looking cross hatch thing. Um, so I need to do that as well. So um, uh, there's other photo etch that we put on in a previous video. If I just make sure that you've got that in shot here and we can paint all of that at the same time so the next job is a lot of white painting right we are nearing the end of the promenade deck uh, railings have been installed now and been given a paint i've still got one or two little bits to pick out but nothing major so my next job is to install these um life raft tubs and then we've got some davits to go in as well um, there is some photo etch um, in the um, gold medal models um, photo etch set so there is some little hand wheels you can put on so we need to have a look at that those parts aren't cleaned up yet and they need painting these are ready to go so we can install those um, next, I did find it was really useful that we didn't have didn't need to glue in the uh, lifeboats because I found it um, handy to be able to remove them uh, when installing all of this railing along here. So all the railing is installed, the railing's painted. I've also managed to install the uh, little um, davits as well. So. Um, it's just a matter now of getting these on and I think we are pretty much done then for the um, promenade deck.
Okay, my um, davits are painted up. We've got the uh, little photo etch wheels on them, uh, which does enhance them and adds uh, a little bit of much needed detail. Um, so with the railings and the photo etch cradles, I think this area looks pretty good now. Of course, the camera's rolling, so this isn't going to give me any glue. Yep, there we go. Uh, I think I perhaps should have gone with CA. Ah, there we go. Right. Well, I've started, so I'll finish. <laughs> 